Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar. I'm Adam Small, Training Manager here at HarborTouch, and today we'll be demonstrating HarborTouch Echo. Before we bring up the software, I want to talk a little bit about the services you'll receive with your HarborTouch Echo system. When you sign up for a HarborTouch Echo station, you'll be getting more than just an app. You'll be getting the sleek, custom-designed HarborTouch Echo hardware, powerful and easy-to-use HarborTouch Echo software, as well as 24-7 support and a full warranty on all of the equipment. Most significantly, the software, hardware, payment services, and support are all handled in-house by HarborTouch, which means that there is just one point of contact for all of your questions. HarborTouch is able to provide these services for free due to its revolutionary business model. HarborTouch provides the support and the payment services, creating an inherent interest in the profitability of your business. Ensuring that the hardware and the software are always fully operational reduces HarborTouch support costs while providing the business with stability and security. And developing new features that improve the business's bottom line provide HarborTouch with incentive to add even more. If your station is having technical difficulties, it's a problem for us just like it is for you. HarborTouch only makes money when you're processing credit cards, so if your station is down, we'll make sure it gets back up and running as quickly as possible. The equipment that you'll receive includes the HarborTouch Echo POS station, which features a 13.3-inch touchscreen display, a durable aluminum casing, dual hinge stand, and the screen can rotate 180 degrees so that customers can sign for their transactions right on the screen. HarborTouch Echo comes with a thermal receipt printer, cash drawer, customer display, and a flexible spill-proof keyboard. A remote printer and a barcode scanner can be added to your order for a small one-time fee. Now we're going to bring up the software and take a look at the feature sets that we have available in HarborTouch Echo. Okay, first we're going to log in with our four-digit PIN in order to view the system in its most basic and streamlined mode, calculator mode. Uh, we'll go ahead and ring in some basic transactions here so you guys can get a feel for how the system's going to work. Uh, though it is pretty simple, pretty straightforward, uh, we would just ring in the transactions using this blue number pad over here on the right. You can see the items populating on the left-hand side on the check. Uh, once we have all the transactions, all the items rang in, we can go ahead and select the green payment button. It's going to take us to our pay screen. We'll indicate this is a cash transaction. And then we'll go ahead and uh, close out of that sale, move on to the next one. When the merchant first receives their Echo Station, it's going to default to calculator mode, and some merchants are going to want to keep it just like that. Uh, they don't want anything more complex than just this basic interface that we see here. Uh, however, most merchants are going to want something a little bit more complex than that. Uh, so once they program in a few menu items into that system, it's going to automatically switch over uh, to what we call ECR mode, which we'll go ahead and take a look at here next. Once an item is added to the system, it's going to switch over from calculator mode to ECR mode. ECR mode has item buttons laid out across the screen in order to mimic the layout of a cash register. This allows for more detailed tracking and reporting since sales can now be tied in with consistent items rather than just open prices. ECR mode retains a persistent calculator in the right hand corner of the screen there. Uh, so not all items need to be programmed into the system for a merchant to start using ECR mode. Uh, this mode can easily handle dozens of unique items, uh, as it can display up to 30 items on the screen at any time, and that's in addition to the calculator being on screen as well. Uh, it also has the option to hold multiple pages, each with 30 items on there. We also have full control over the display and layout of the buttons in this mode. If we go to Manager and then select Screen Edit Mode, we'll see that we can select a button, change the name, the color, move where it's located on the screen, or remove it entirely. So while ECR mode can handle a lot of merchant environments, eventually some accounts are going to outgrow this mode. Uh, they're going to need more buttons for more detailed tracking and reporting, uh, and it's no longer going to be useful them, for them to have that open calculator at the bottom of the screen. So as a merchant's business operations continue to mature, they can go ahead and switch over to POS mode. POS mode will allow the merchant to easily access hundreds of menu items as this mode makes use of departments and tags to categorize those items. Each department can hold 21 different menu items per page, and there can be multiple pages of items within its single department. There's also a scrollable list of departments that's displayed here in the middle of the screen and there's no limit to how many departments can be in the system total. 
In addition to sorting items by department, we can also use alternative methods to locate particular items in the system. Tags are displayed next to the departments. This allows for us to create different categorizations of menu items. Here we can see items displayed based on daily specials rather than by department. Another method of finding items in the system is to use a search feature located at the top of the screen. By selecting search, uh, the user can type in the name of an item rather than sorting through the system using those tags and departments. Next, we'll take a look at how we can activate different modules within the system. There are several modules which can be activated and deactivated on Harbor Touch Echo. Right now, we're seeing Echo running in POS mode with no modules running other than the Items and Departments module. If this module were to be deactivated, it would switch us back into Calculator mode. Uh, so by going into Settings and selecting different areas, we can activate new buttons on the screen, as we can see here now. We can expand the screen's functionality to allow for customers, employees, discounts, and order types. We'll take a look at some of these more advanced features now, starting with the Customer Database. Harbor Touch Echo has the ability to track an unlimited number of customers via the customer database. By selecting Customer at the top of the screen, it'll show a list of the customers currently being tracked in the system. By touching on a customer's name, it'll show the information we can track about this customer. This includes their name, their email address, multiple phone numbers, and multiple physical addresses. We can also add tags to the customers just as we can to the items. There's also a small field here for notes about the customer and the customer's ID number. We can edit this information directly from this screen by selecting the Customer Profile button. From here, we can add and edit any information we saw on the previous screen. We'll go ahead and add an email address to this customer's profile now. Once we have all of the information entered and the correct customer selected, we can add them to the transaction by selecting Done. This will display the highlighted customer at the top of the check. Now we can start ringing in items onto the check. We'll start by ringing in a basic item, such as this Diet Pepsi. A basic item will add itself to the check on the left-hand side of the screen as soon as it's selected. After ringing in an item, we can click on that item to display the Item Options page. Some items will show the item options screen automatically if they have a required modifier set. Modifier sets allow the user to further customize a particular order, allowing for a more complex order, uh, such as this turkey club sandwich on wheat bread with tomatoes, onions, and bacon, but no olives. We'll select Done to add this to the check. We'll see that the bacon adds a $1 upcharge to this order. Upcharges and additional pricing can be added to any modifier. We can bring back the item option screen if we need to make any additional changes just by selecting and clicking on any item on the check. At the top of the item options page, there's also a field for special requests. This can be used for any options which are not covered by the modifier sets already attached to the item. So for any strange or one-off requests, this field can be used. It's also going to print to the kitchen so that the cooks are aware of what needs to be done to the order. Above the Special Request field is the option to adjust the item's quantity. This can be used to easily add multiples of the same item to the check, or it can be used to ring in partial quantities. This is most commonly used for items which are sold by weight. Even though there's currently no scale available for Harbor Touch Echo, we can manually type in the weight of the item in this field, and it's going to price accordingly. At the bottom of the screen, we can see the red Remove Item button, which will void a particular item from the check. Also on the item options screen, we can see an option for a discount. This is for discounts which apply just to one particular item. If we want a discount to apply to the entire check, we would close out of the item options screen and navigate to the discounts button at the left hand corner of the screen below the check. We'll take a closer look at how we can set up discounts later, but we wanted to point out how we can use these discounts on both individual items and on the entire check. Harbor Touch Echo can also place an order on hold so it can be recalled and paid for later. Once an order is populated, we can select the hold button at the top of the screen. This will store the transaction and allow it to be recalled at a later time. At any time, we can select the recall button to view these transactions. 
Held orders are orders which still require payment. We can identify the order using the timestamp, the customer's name, or the order number. It's also possible to recall orders which have already been paid out. By selecting completed sales, we can view and recall past transactions. It's also possible to issue a refund from this screen if necessary. We'll go ahead and navigate back to our held orders now. That way we can recall the previous transaction so we can pay it out and take a look at some of the different payment functions within the Harbor Touch ecosystem. Once the check is ready to be paid out, we'll have several options for closing out the check. The quickest way to pay out a transaction is to use the fast pay buttons located at the bottom of the screen. These will pay out the transaction automatically with cash. You'll see common tender amounts being populated at the bottom of the screen, and these will also adjust as more items are added to the transaction. We'll go ahead and pay out this transaction now using the fast pay buttons at the bottom of the screen. It'll automatically close out with cash, and then we'll ring in another transaction so that we can pay it out using a credit card. To do so, we'll select the green pay button at the bottom of the screen. This is going to take us to our generic payment screen. From here, we can pay out a transaction using cash or a credit card or any other payment type. In order to run a credit card transaction, we would just swipe the card through on this screen and it's automatically going to populate the information. If the system is set up to accept tips, it will prompt us to add a tip to the transaction. There will be three preset tip amounts which can be customized in the settings screen. There will also be an option to add a custom tip amount or to proceed without adding any tip at all. At this point, the system can be configured to prompt for the customer to sign on the screen. This feature can be used in conjunction with the 180 degree rotation which is offered on Harbor Touch Echo. The merchant would simply need to push the release located below the screen and spin the screen towards the customer so that they can sign for the transaction. If they prefer, this option can be disabled and the customer can still sign on the credit card slip which prints at the end of the transaction. Once the tip is added and the signature has been captured, we can select the blue continue button to finalize the transaction. If we need to refund the transaction, we would use the recall function and navigate to completed sales. Here we would find the transaction which we're looking to refund, highlight it, and select the red refund button. It will ask us if we want to refund the whole transaction or just one individual item, and it will then prompt us for a reason as to why the transaction is being refunded. It will ask us once more to confirm the refund before reversing the sale. If we navigate back to the main screen, we can also see how to issue an open refund. To do so, we would select Manager and then Open Refund. It will prompt us for the amount of the refund. We'll then select Refund and choose a tender. At this time, open refunds can only be issued in cash. It will prompt us for a refund reason and then ask us to confirm the refund once more before issuing the money. At this point, we're going to go ahead and log out of the system and then log back in as a regular employee rather than the admin user. Uh, by doing so, we're going to take a look at pretty much all the features that we've looked at so far, tying them all together. And we're also going to take a look at one of the largest and one of the newest features on Harbor Touch Echo, and that is the employee time clock and labor features. So we'll go ahead and log out now and then log in as a regular employee. The first thing that we'll notice is that now when we log in as an employee, if the user has multiple jobs available to them, it's going to ask them which job that they're going to be working this shift. And if they're not already clocked in, it's going to alert us at the bottom of the screen that it started a shift for that user. Uh, so now we're going to bring in a few quick transactions and then proceed to check out our shift report. We're going to bring in a, just a few basic transactions here. Uh, the first one, we'll just ring in a simple item and pay it out with cash. For this next transaction, uh, we're going to pay this one out with a credit card, and we're going to go ahead and use the signature screen and add a tip to that transaction as well. For this third transaction, we'll apply another cash transaction, but this time we're also going to apply a discount uh, using one of these discounts that we have available to us in the system. We'll then pay that one out as well. All right, 
And uh, now we'll go ahead and take a look at the shift report for this user. So we're going to load this employee's shift report, uh, first by selecting the employee's name in the upper right hand corner of the screen. On the screen, we're going to see a few options available to us. The third one is going to read shift report. Once we click on the shift report, we're going to be able to see a lot of different information. Uh, first, it's going to show any captured credit card tips for that particular shift. We can also view and declare any cash tips that have been collected during that shift for this employee. You can also see two options down here. The blue button is going to send this employee on break, and the red button is going to clock them out and end that shift entirely. Also at the bottom of the screen, we can see a couple different buttons. Uh, we can see options to view and print out the shift report. If we select view, uh, the shift report is going to pop up and we're going to see a lot of different information here. The clock in and clock out times for that particular shift. The total amount of time that the employee was clocked in for that shift. How much of that time uh, the employee spent on breaks. It's also going to show us any tips from credit card sales, which are still owed to the employee for that shift. Uh, we're also going to see totals for the number of tickets, uh, the amounts and discounts and taxes that were ran during that particular shift. Now we're going to select back, which takes us right back to the main ordering screen. Uh, from here, we're going to take a look at the time clock screen, which can be found under the manager settings. From the time clock screen, a user can view past shift reports and can view shift reports for other users. We can view the reports of all of the employees in the system or we can just highlight one particular employee and just view shifts from that user. At the top of the screen, we can also adjust the time frame so we can narrow down exactly which shifts that we want to view. By selecting a shift, we can edit the properties of that shift. We can adjust the clock in and clock out times. So if a user claims that they arrived early and just forgot to clock in, we can adjust that timestamp. So it'll be reflected on the reporting. We can also change a job which was worked during that shift, uh, how much the employee declared in cash tips. We can view and print the reports from this interface and we can even delete the shift entirely. Just as we can delete entire shifts, we can also create a new one using the Add Shift button. So if an employee forgets to clock in for an entire day shift, we can add that shift in retroactively. We just need to select the employee, select the Add Shift button. From here, we'll set the clock in time and also when the user clocked out, we'll be sure to record any breaks that they took during that shift. Then once we hit Save, that shift is going to be reflected on the time clock screen and in all of the labor reports. So now that we've taken a look at the labor aspects of the system, the time clock feature, and we've taken a look at some of the different reports available in the system, we're going to back out, go to the manager screen, and then select settings. Uh, the settings screen is going to allow the merchant to customize the system to meet the needs of their business. All modules can be activated, deactivated, and edited through this interface. The settings screens will only be accessible if the user has management permissions. If the user does not have any management permissions, it will prompt them for a manager's override pin before they can access anything within the manager or settings screen. We'll go ahead and take a look at the first category here for general settings. General settings is where the user can set which view, ECR or POS, that they want the system to default to. They can also name the register to make it easier to keep track of different stations. Uh, the timeout time is how long the system will remain idle before going to the login screen. There's also a toggle here for accepting tips and for settling the default tip amounts. At the bottom of the screen, we can see when the business day will roll over, how much cash the drawer starts with, and what email address the batch info will be sent to. By selecting taxes, we can configure various tax rates in the system. This also includes the option of hidden taxes which means that the tax will be rolled into the price of the item rather than being added on later. If we go to the tender screen, we can adjust how various tender types work within the system. We'll now move on and take a look at some options on the hardware settings screen. The hardware settings screen has options for configuring both the local printer and the remote printer. This includes some options for formatting the receipt and setting the font size. Clock settings is where we can set what time zone the system will use. 
Network settings and support log are only used for technical support and troubleshooting. Next, we'll back out and take a look at receipt settings. Receipt settings gives us further control on how to customize how the receipt works within the system. We can toggle the option to print and email receipts to the customers, and we can also toggle what information appears in the receipts and the kitchen tickets. We'll now move on and take a look at departments and items. Departments and items is where we can create and adjust the structure of the menu in the system. Department setup is where we can create and edit the broadest category on the menu, the departments which hold the individual items. This is usually where the taxes are applied. Item setup is where we configure the core building block of the system, the items themselves. We can set the name of the item, a short name which will appear in ECR mode. We can then choose the style of the button, which department it belongs to, and modifiers or tags that we want associated with the item. We can also set the price of the item along with the cost of the item to the business. Uh, quantity on hand is going to tie in with the inventory tracking, which we'll take a look at in a few moments. We can page over for more item options. Uh, here we can see some custom attributes which can be added to these items. These attributes can be used to track any information which isn't already tracked in the system, such as vendor and shelf life in this instance. We can configure the item to be sold by weight, allowing us to type in the weight of each item each time it's entered. This is also where we would scan in the barcode for the item, allowing it to be rang in using the barcode scanner. Modifier sets are groups of modifiers. We can toggle if this is a required option or if it allows more than one option to be selected. So in this case, adding toppings is an optional set which can be bypassed and many modifiers can be selected, while bread choice is required and only allows one modifier per item. At the bottom of the screen, we can select which modifiers belong to this particular modifier set, and we can set a price which applies to all options within the set. Modifiers are the individual choices which are contained within a modifier set. So a modifier set might be dressings, while the actual modifiers would be ranch, Italian, balsamic, etc. We can set a price and a cost on each modifier in the system. Custom attributes allow us to track information on our items which is not tracked in the system by default. The user can add in any information using this setting so that it can be tracked on each item. For instance, some businesses may want to know the country of origin for their items. Even though this isn't an option in the system by default, we can add it here using a custom attribute. Item tags allow us an alternative way of sorting through items in the system. Here, we can see items being categorized by what day they are on special, and they can display in this way in addition to being displayed by department. Item tracking allows us to see how many of a given item are left in stock, and it allows us to edit that number. This can be useful for individually packaged items. However, the system will only be able to track on the item level. So it cannot do ingredient tracking, and it cannot tie like items together in any way. On the main employee screen, we're going to see a toggle to track the employee's hours with the time clock feature and to track their breaks on the system. And we have a toggle to decide if the breaks are paid or unpaid. Selecting employee setup and then selecting an employee will allow us to view the information that we can track about the employees in the system. That's going to include their name, uh, their phone number, email address, their home address. From this screen, we're also going to be able to select which jobs the employee is eligible to perform and if the system is going to track labor on that particular employee. This is also where we'll set the employee's login pin and assign it to a magnetic swipe card. If we go back and then take a look at the job screen, we'll see several options that affect how the job is